Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from QBKing77.com here with the Vivo Air made by Blue. This is actually the thinnest smartphone in the United States right now. It's crazy thin. It's also extremely light um, and it's a budget phone. So it's $199 on Amazon unlocked. You don't need a contract with it. But anyways, it's time for a full review. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the design, the software, just so many things about it I've been using as my daily driver for a little while now. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, just to give you an idea how crazy thin it is, I put it next to a couple of smartphones. You'll see the G3 on the left, the Note 4 on the right. You'll also notice it does lie completely flat, so nothing protrudes out. The camera doesn't protrude out, anything like that. Moving on over, you'll see the S5 on the far left, and then moving on back, you'll see the M8 on the far right. You'll also notice, of course, like I said, it lies flat, so it has no curvature to it. But again, look at how much thinner it is when it sits on a table compared to these two. Now anyways, Blue did a very good job with the design. So you'll see on the front, you got some sensors, the earpiece, and then the five megapixel front facing camera. You actually have capacitive buttons down at the bottom. You'll see a home button, a menu button, and a back button right there. On the left side, you have the only thing that protrudes out of the phone, which would be the volume rockers and the power button, the power button being below. And also it's noticeable that they're on the left side. It took me a little while to get used to, but now that I'm used to it, it's really not that big of a deal. Pretty easy to use. Uh, on the right side, you have the SIM card slot. On the top, absolutely nothing. Down at the bottom, you have the micro USB 2.0 slot, microphone, and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And then on the back, you have an eight megapixel camera with an LED flash, and it's completely smooth. It does not protrude out, so you'll notice. Uh, like I said, when you set it down, it lies completely flat on the table. Now let's go ahead and get this screen on. There's a few ways you can do it. One with the power button, of course. Another way with the volume down button, this actually lights the screen up as well. And also you, there's a setting where you can double tap to wake up the display. So those are three options to wake it up. Now I wanna talk about the lock screen real quick. So you'll see you can swipe up to unlock the device, but you can also swipe over and it brings up this menu. If I press the camera, it actually sometimes opens up the camera application automatically and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but you'll see the camera application gets loaded up. I tap this button and it takes a picture like so. Very cool, I'll get to the camera later on in this video. You can record something very quickly. You can turn on a torch. So you'll see the torch works well. And also, one of my favorite features, it's hilarious, is fake call. So what you can do is you press it and then it gives you 15 seconds. It says you will receive a fake phone call to help you easily get away from a predicament. So you'll see if I turn this off or I'm in something and I just put it away in my pocket, it's gonna call me and then you're just gonna be like, sorry, I have to take this. And it buzzed and you'll see unknown. It's actually vibrating like it should be. And then if I answer it, it's actually a woman saying something. Please. Hi, can you send me the file as soon as possible, please? So you see, kind of a little odd. She Hi, just says it on repeat over and over, but it's a really kind of cool feature in case you do need to get out of a situation or something. It has a 4.8 inch display, so fairly large. It is a 720p AMOLED display, and overall it's been a good screen. I mean, typical AMOLED, uh, the blacks are great. They're obviously completely black. Uh, the colors are pretty vibrant, a little saturated, but it's still, still a very good display. Um, but one thing about it is it's kind of difficult to see outside uh, brightness settings. So you'll see I have brightness right here. It doesn't get very bright, so it's kind of difficult if it's very sunny outside to kind of see out in the sun. That's just the one gripe I have about the display is the brightness level. I wish it could go up a little bit more. Now let's talk about specs really quick. It has a MediaTek 8-core processor running at 1.7 gigahertz. I know MediaTek isn't as well known as a brand such as Qualcomm with processors, uh, but overall the processor has been pretty good. I'll show you a couple things, maybe playing a game, uh, see how the processor handles it so you guys can check it out. Now, one thing, if I could change one thing about this phone, it'd be the amount of RAM that it has. It only has one gigabytes of RAM. I wish they would have put in two, um, just to kind of future-proof it a little bit more. Uh, I, you, I have noticed that uh, some running apps get killed quicker because there's only one gigabytes of RAM and they need to make space for all those other ones. Uh, it does come with a, I guess you could call it a RAM cleaner right here. So you'll see 73% use. It lets you know how much is available, how many megs. Um, and I guess it kind of acts as a task killer to clear up that RAM. Um, I don't know exactly if it's going to truly work and actually do what it's supposed to, but I mean, overall, I haven't really had any issues with using it. You just kind of tap, uh, tap this guy, it flies up, and then it clears up some RAM for you. 
Now, when it comes to storage, it has 16 gigabytes of internal storage, but there is no slot for a micro SD card. So you're stuck with 16 gigabytes. Uh, that might be a problem for some. It might be okay for others, depending on how much cloud storage, et cetera, you use, but uh, it's not expandable. I'm guessing the design kind of attributed to that. And finally, I'm guessing because they use the MediaTek processor and, and things of that nature, it does not have LTE. However, it does have HSPA Plus. Uh, I'm on T-Mobile. That's what I've been using it on as my daily driver. And I'm going to go ahead and run a speed test for you guys right now. So with this speed test, um, like I said, it's HSPA Plus. So it's not LTE. It does not have LTE at all. I'll link. I'll let you guys know what the bands are in the description if you want to know if it works for your carrier, etc. I'm going to hit begin test and let's go ahead and run through. Again, this is going to depend on your area. So don't expect if you have T-Mobile and you, you think you're going to get these speeds, you might want to double check in your area if you want to give up LTE or if you don't have LTE, it might not be that big of a deal for you. So you'll see I get very good HS, HSPA plus speeds. Okay, done with that. You'll see seven megabits per second right there. Download speeds. Now let's check the upload speed. Okay, there you go. So 7.11 megabits per second download and 2.24 megabits per second upload. So that is doable for me. I do have LTE in my area, but I can handle those speeds. I haven't had any issues with downloading apps or anything over T-Mobile's 4G uh, HSPA+. Plus. Now, before I get to battery and camera, I want to actually talk about the software a little bit. So right here, this is actually the main home launcher that you do have. It does not have an app drawer. Um, there's two things I pretty much recommend right out of the box, and one of them being install a third-party launcher, which is a great thing about Android. You can customize it. Hey, you might like this launcher. You might want to use it yourself. But a couple odd things. If I press and hold the menu button, it acts as the recent running apps button. So I'm gonna press and hold it, and you'll see I have a list kind of similar to uh, iOS, I guess. You'll see a list of recent apps. I have three of them right here. You can tap on it to multitask, and it'll go into a specific application. Now, one thing to note with this home launcher is if you're in an app and you press and hold the menu button, it doesn't do anything. You can't recent, uh, you can't like multitask within apps. It's kind of odd that they did that with their home launcher only. So um, that's just with this home launcher. So th this is actually why I recommend installing a third party launcher. Um, now you'll see I have uh, the Google Now launcher installed. So I'm going to go to that. Uh, it says currently your default. Go to settings, clear defaults under the launcher. So I'm going to clear defaults go home, and you'll see Google Now Launcher, I'm gonna hit Always. Now you'll notice I'll load it on up, and if I wanna go into an application, such as the camera, load that up, and then I go press and hold the menu button, and it will work. So like I said, one of the main things I would recommend is to install a third-party launcher. Another one being install a third-party SMS application. Group texting, I can't get to work on the stock app, uh, the stock messaging app, you'll see messaging right there. I don't use it anymore. I just switched to Textra. That's the one that I've been using. So th that'll get group text messaging working for you. Now, a couple more things I wanted to point out. Like I said, um, it does have one gig of RAM and a uh, MediaTek processor. Overall, the performance has been pretty good. I've been surprised at how well it performs uh, opening and closing apps. You're going to get stuttering here and there, whether you're installing apps uh, or anything. You're going to get a couple few stuttering, but I don't have any issues with force closing at all. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and load up a game here. Uh, I believe I have a, a little decent uh, graphic intensive game called Goat Simulator. I'm, I'm sure you might have heard of it by now, but I'm going to go ahead and play it for you really quick. Just watch how long it takes to load up, etc. Um, and I mean, I just want you to kind of take a look at the screen as well, the colors, the visuals, just kind of how, how well it runs the game, if there's any lag, anything like that. But like I said, running through apps, it's not that bad. Um, I don't have any crazy long times where I'm waiting for an app to open or anything like that. But you'll see it's still loading up. Okay, and you'll see it loaded up. It took a bit of time to load, which is okay. Um, and we'll go ahead and play. And let's go to the level. And it's going to load the level up. Again, I'm just kind of letting you see how long it actually takes to load. So with uh, just the specs of the phone, it's going to take a little bit longer to load games like this, which is okay for me. Like I said, as long as it runs it smoothly, I'm okay. So now let's go ahead and try it out. So you'll see the, the graphics look good overall. I'm trying to play through this camera. It's a little difficult, but you'll see. I mean, I haven't had really any issues with this force closing or crashing or anything like that. Um, I mean, overall, this game is ran smoothly. And this is a more graphic intensive game. I'm sorry if that is bothering you. I apologize for that. But you'll see, works well. So, I mean, I just kind of wanted to show off this game. You guys can see some different colors, uh, etc. Just a different look at it. Okay, but that's enough of that. I'm gonna go home 
and also show you guys a little bit of multitasking. So I'm going to go ahead and go to press and hold the menu button, go back to the calculator, press and hold the menu button, go back to the calendar. You guys can see it load up, see how long it takes. Let's go back to the camera. It's going to load that up. And then let's go back to that goat simulator game and we'll see if it saves it. Like I said, the limited RAM can kind of, uh, I'll kind of make it close every once in a while with that multitasking. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, it wants to sign in. I'm just going to hit cancel. I don't know why it didn't, it, it, it didn't ask me to do this before, but you see it loads the game up right where I was. So good. So after doing those quick things, uh, but like I said, limited RAM, it might have to close it after using a certain amount of apps. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the camera application. Um, now, let's go ahead and talk about it. So overall, it's an 8 megapixel camera, and it takes very good picture. I mean, good pictures for an 8 megapixel camera in good lighting situations. Now, if it's uh, the lighting's kind of bad, then the pictures aren't that great. It takes a little bit of time to focus, but overall, it takes pretty good. You can press and hold the camera button in burst shot. You'll see it'll take a bunch of pictures right there. Uh, you can switch to video camera. It shoots 1080p video. Um, if for those of you that were wondering, I can just record into it. So I'll go into settings here and it brings the settings over here. Uh, video quality, it says medium. You can set it to high at 720p and fine is 1080p. You can go all the way down to QCIF, I believe that's what it says. Now there's also an anti-shaking feature. If you want me to upload a review video of just the video camera, I might do that. I might put it on private. I'll link to it in the description if I actually end up doing it. So let me go back out of it. Um, and yeah, so that's a camera application. I want to go to a couple pictures that I did take. Um, but like I said, it, if the lighting situation is okay, then it's going to take pretty solid pictures. So you'll see here's the burst shot that I did. I took a bunch of them. Let me load up another one that I took that has a couple different colors and I wanted to focus in on it. So here's one if I want to go ahead and put it uh, horizontally. So let's look at this. Just to kind of get a look at the texture, the colors, but like I said, solid camera, especially for a device that's $200, an 8 megapixel camera. It does the job in good light, good lighting situations. As you can see, this is another good lighting situation. It takes pretty solid pictures. Um, I mean, nothing crazy. It's not going to compete with uh, Note 4 or anything like that, any of those flagships, but it still takes pretty solid pictures. Now anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the battery life. Now, I'm actually pretty surprised with battery life. I thought it was going to be bad. I'm not going to lie. I thought the battery life on this, with the thinness, it has a 2100 milliamp hour battery. I thought it wasn't going to be that good. But overall, it's it's actually surprisingly good. Uh, standby time is what gets me. When I, I'm not using my phone, when I leave it off, the screen's off, it doesn't lose power very much. It does, it's, it's really great actually. So if I wanted to go ahead and swipe down, go over to settings and I want to go over to battery settings. So let's go ahead and find those battery. One thing to note also with the software is that you can put a battery percentage either in the, in the box or outside the box or not at all. So that's kind of nice. So you'll see battery percentage style, but you'll see I'm at about 50%. Uh, right now I've had it for nine hours and let's go ahead and check the screen on time. I haven't used it a crazy amount. So two and a half hours. Um, that's fairly heavy use. I mean, I didn't use it nearly as much as I have been, but overall I get about three and a half hours of daily use. I, I usually want to try and charge it just a little bit during the day, but charging is quick, surprisingly, so that's not that big of a deal. So uh, overall, battery is good. Honestly, I'm surprised to say that 2100 milliamp hour battery uh, and battery life is good. They've done something to KitKat and the OS to make it so standby doesn't drain a lot of battery or anything, so it uh, it's pretty good. Now to finish things off, I want to talk about a couple added features um, within the settings. So you see you have a pull down bar. One other issue I have with the software is for some reason with their skin they have over Android, you cannot expand or contract notifications. You'll see that just swiped it away. So I can't use two fingers to actually expand or contract or even one finger. It doesn't work. I don't know exactly why. It's kind of a pain, but I guess, I, I guess I've gotten over it by now. But if I swipe over to settings, you have a bunch of different toggles that you can edit. Uh, alarms, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all the standard ones, quick power, um, data. So you'll see, and uh, brightness as well. So brightness doesn't change very much. Like I said, that could be changed. And then you can go directly into settings through this button. Now you have a quick settings option, which takes you to the more standard ones. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary there. And then you have all settings. So one thing I wanted to point out is something called smart gestures that they have that you can turn on. So a couple of smart gestures, smart dial, um, if I tap on it, it'll show you, bring it up to your face. I couldn't really get that to work very well. Maybe I was doing it wrong. Um, actually, I think I was because I was within the Textra app, so I don't think it's going to work within that specific application. Smart answer, pick up your phone, pause alarm, double tap to wake, 
quick, quick operating. So when the phone is asleep, drawing a special shape to do something. So if I, if, I'll show you guys this, it's kind of funny actually. Um, and then smart remind, it'll buzz again if you have a missed uh, call or text message. So quick operating again, uh, if I go home and I lock the screen and I draw a C on the lock screen, it should open up the camera application, it does. Now one weird thing is that they don't give you a list of these smart commands, maybe they do in the manual, but I can't find a list of actually gesture smart commands that I can use. So that's just one thing that's uh, just a little off, I guess, um, which I kind of turned off because I don't really know them and I don't necessarily uh, need them at the moment. But anyways, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. Like I said, a 720p display, which probably helps with the battery life, uh, but overall the design is just crazy. It's a beautifully designed phone. That's what I'm gonna say is it's really well designed and performance is good as well. Battery life is good. Uh, like I said, I wish it had two gigabytes of RAM, but it doesn't. And it's only 199, so I can't really complain too much about it. Again, you can just install a third-party launcher; it makes it that much better. Uh, same with the SMS app. And overall, it's what's great about Android, and it's what's great about this phone is that you can customize it. So there you go. Uh, and also, I almost forgot the speaker on the back. It's okay. Nothing crazy, nothing special, it's just okay. Especially with a thin device, it's kind of hard to put crazy sound uh, hardware into there. But anyways, let me know what you think. Leave a comment, happy to hear from you guys. Check out the Vivo Air from Blue, I'll link to it in the description of the video. And again, be sure to subscribe to me, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, all links in the description of the video below. And as always guys, thank you for watching.